power station approvals are reducing the demand for coal. Options for the disposal of the Brent Spa oil rig have been unveiled. Bull UK from Billingham and AMEC from Tyneside. None of the contractors' plans is as cheap as the original solution, deep-sea dumping, which is still the government's favoured option. Protests from the environmental group Greenpeace stopped Shell Any dumping the rig two yeah. years ago. The company will announce its preferred option by the end of this year. Now, if you ever fancied rat festival, unicycles, devil sticks and multicoloured tights were all on show as visitors were invited to learn the skills of the big top. A first for Durham, a festival to bring together jugglers from all over Britain. It's been made possible with money from the National Lottery and the know-how of the Durham City jugglers, who hope it'll become an annual event. It's great. This is fantastic. I mean, there's, there's such good feeling about, and there's people who've come in from, from our advertising locally, who've never juggled before, but, but saw the advertising has come along. We've got all the jugglers up from surrounding areas. It's, it's great. This is a chance to have a go at something new, or show off some existing skills. Of course, the experts always make it look so easy. But they do say anyone can learn to juggle in 10 minutes. You just have to concentrate. So I've been learning the devil stick today, so that's a new skill for me. And I'm just trying to learn the clubs now as well. I'm trying, but not very well. And quite the only trick, so uh, it's all time for credit. Dangerous, I keep getting run over. They're all ever so good, and it seems to be like golf, funny trousers are obli obligatory. If you're really after a challenge, there's always the UV room. Apparently, this illumination helps focus the mind. Lucy Allen, North East Tonight, Durham. Well, now. Um. But for former pit areas in the region that didn't have that handy market and saw their main source of employment swept away, five years on there is at last some good news. A government task force is to look at how to regenerate them. I'm looking at Seaham and Easington and others uh, to see what we can do here. And uh, that's what the task force is going to do. It'll report to me by March and I hope to have a sort of series of recommendations to be made at a big conference based on the coalfield communities then. But if today the boss of RJB Mining failed to sway the government to stop the dash for gas, the workload for Mr Prescott's task force could get heavier still. Well, when the pit closure programme was announced, thousands of miners had to face an uncertain future. And at the time, shipyard workers were also witnessing the decline of their industry. Many did lose their jobs, but for others it was the beginning of a new era. This Newcastle printing business was born at a time when the North's traditional heavy industries were dying out. David Temple had been a miner in County Durham for 21 years, but his days in the mines came to a swift end soon after the pit closure program was announced five years ago today. Suddenly, he was out of work. When you have an industry which catered for 25% uh, of the population of County Durham at one point, between shipbuilding and, uh, and mining. When you have an industry like that that goes and its traditions are bound to be affected by that. Um, and not only is it um, the fact that it's gone, but the manner in which it went also uh, is a, a great sadness. It went very quickly and it went without the um, provision of other jobs for men to go into. But uh, yeah, you feel as if uh, you know there's no future and uh, you wonder what you're gonna do. Thousands of miners and shipyard workers lost their jobs. Some are still out of work. Others, like David, took a risk and invested their redundancy money in new ventures. The printing business brought a small group of men to this building in the biker area of Newcastle. They began by printing leaflets for the trade union movement, but slowly expanded and now publish novels written by some of the North's best-known authors. Uh, we've, we've literally gone from having a little small printing machine in a small part of this building to expanded to two floors now of the building. We, we first of all started to you know, had to learn how to print. Um, men had to be you know, retrained to print. And, and then we started the publications. I just had to learn how to 
how to put a book together, how to uh, design it, and uh, later on we had to learn how to typeset and how to uh, how to develop the book, how to market it. It's now a successful business, but for David and his colleagues, there's a lingering nostalgia for the past. He missed the lads, he missed the crack, he missed the comradeship. We were involved in a in a battle to keep our jobs, and that built friendships and. But I could leave the pit on a Friday and I wouldn't think about it until the Monday when I had to go back. But you can't do that here. You've got to be thinking all the time of what's going to happen on Monday because you 